myself as well as most people that I know that, that do this sort of thing, it starts with the costume. It starts by going, and the same for me, it started by going to comic conventions. San Diego Comic Con was my first. Um, I go to as many conventions in Southern California as I can possibly attend. And then after going a couple years, I started costuming. And the more I costumed, the more I enjoyed it. And then you just, because there's so many conventions in Southern California, you end up seeing the same people and staying in touch on social media. And then some people eventually asked me if I wanted to do charitable work, and of course I wanted to, and it's, it's the most rewarding costuming that I do, this charity. We do all kinds of charity events, hospital visits, fundraisers, any place where they need costumers. Um, you do have to have a Marvel costume to enter, but a lot of our events we, we bring Marvel, DC, Star Wars characters, Disney princesses, all that stuff. The better we cope, um, the better we heal, and the more joy we bring into our life, it's going to increase that healing, which is exactly what Avengers Initiative does for our, our pediatric patients and their families. They bring an additional joy to just kind of support and enhance that coping. The hospitals themselves are so strict in bringing on people into visiting patients that when I heard somebody, you know, interested in coming to see the patients, I was really taken back because I wasn't sure what to expect. And um, once we, once they came to the hospital, it was like, you know, like a one, like a, I don't know, 180. I don't know. It was just so nice to see what they did for our patients. Afterwards, a lot of times we'll get together for dinner. We'll, we're covered in sweat. We're dirty. We're hungry. Uh, we'll take off our costumes. We'll go somewhere close by to eat. And we stopped at a burger shop. And we were just talking about how great it went and how we did. And there just happened to be a woman at the next table that works at the hospital we just came from. She had just gotten off and she was having dinner. And she chimed in and said, you know, I want to thank you for what you did today because she said, these kids, even though you spend five or ten minutes with each, with each one, they, they talk about it for weeks. This really affects them. So there's something about seeing those faces, the kids just embracing that uh, interaction and bringing something to them that they might not normally be able to have. So it, it's very valuable for me personally, and I think for most people that do it. It's the joy that you guys bring, the smiles that you bring, not only to the patients and then to the children, but when parents see their child be normal again, be themselves, it's uplifting for those for those parents who feel like they can't bring any normalcy to this life. But it's the first time where a child can say, hey, they're here for me. There's even studies that just a superhero stance, it brings self-confidence and a sense of power to children. So just kind of bringing that to the environment and having children stand in that superhero stance can actually make them feel stronger and like a hero. It gives you a sense of there being more beyond your daily little trivial problems that you might have. And it kind of gives you a, a renewed sense of reality. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer and I fix lab equipment. Pretty boring stuff. And I, I don't get to dress like this either. There are many great volunteer groups, but if you want more information on West Coast Avengers, log on to AvengersHQ.com. So my team and I recently did a visit for Children's Hospital of Orange County, both for inpatient kids who are being treated along with an outpatient event. And, you know, these kids are going through a very difficult time. They got to dress up as Captain America. You know, I'm busy watching my team and stuff like that, and I'll stick pictures with people um, a few times, you know, which just hit me. You know, a kid just runs up to me below my knee. I didn't see him. They give me a hug. You know, they just wrap their arms around my leg and, you know, they're, they're just genuinely happy to see me. I just reminded, um, you know, this is a chance for these kids to experience something very joyful in their lives. My first experience was amazing. I actually wasn't a member for my first experience, but I was recruited to be uh, Tony for a toy drive that we were doing. So I had never been to one of these before, but seeing the kids and reacting with them and the hospital staff was amazing it it really it really beyond words um, especially because they're going through so much and uh, if we can give them a little bit of a break just from real life stuff like that means the world I remember that when I was a kid and it was just magical I would be on air for months and so I hope these kids maybe feel the same way but yeah
with Marvel having been so inclusive with their lineup of superheroes, every child can see themselves in a superhero regardless of race or gender or ethnicity. So it's, it's always been such a great experience seeing them see themselves in you and just, oh my god, like, that's, that's spider, a spider girl, I, I could be a spider girl, and then they, you know, I, I'll sometimes see them, you know, run around, we love to, love to get them to do their little poses with us, um, and that's just so much fun. Everybody has time if they really make it a priority. You know, you have time to watch TV, you have time to go to the movie. Everybody at least has an hour or two that they can give back. If everybody gave back a, just a little bit, the world would be just that much better. My name is Mark Chulin. I serve as the leader for the Avengers Initiative, a volunteer Marvel cosplay group. I will be serving as a moderator for this pediatric dis uh, service discussion called Cosplay in Service to Other for Comic-Con at Home. Um, I'd like to go ahead and turn this to our panel speakers who will go ahead and introduce themselves. I'd like to first begin with our representatives from um, Memorial, Care, Memorial Care Miller uh, Women and Children's Center. Um, Ramona, let me go ahead and begin with you, please. Go ahead and just state who you are and what you do at Miller, please. Hi, everybody. My name is Ramona Bipitek. I'm a child child life specialist at Miller Children's Hospital. Our child life program focuses that our pediatric patients here at the, at the hospital need more, need more than men to heal. So we use special, special events, um, play, develop, develop the appropriate language to, to bring loyalty and comfort to our patients here in the hospital. I'll go ahead and let Pam introduce yourself. So hi everyone. Uh, my name is Pam Tamudo. I am the tech support specialist for the child life program here at Miller Children's and Women's Hospital, Long Beach, California. My role is to support the Child Life Life Program with the use of technology to help, help normalize the hospital environment and pro provide play and distraction for our pediatric patients. Thank you to you both. Lisa, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. And if you'd like to not only show what you do, but if some of the outfits you have. <laughs> Okay. Um, hi, my name is Lisa Lauer. Um, uh, my day job is a teacher. I recently moved to San Diego and have been a member of the Avengers Initiative, um, Sci-Fi Coalition, and a few other charity groups where we dress in cosplay and go out and make kids smile. Um, I have several Marvel costumes and um, several DC ones too. I've got some Wonder Woman and Catwoman and Joker and things like that, um, as well as Peggy Carter, um, and Black Widow, um, and all sorts of other ones. They're always adding to. <laughs> it's a never-ending process. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Alan, sir, let me go to you. Hi, my name is Alan, uh, also known as uh, Fantastic Forte on social media. I am currently... Uh, I work as an EMT during my day job, and at night, I dress up as a superhero. <laughs> um, but seriously, uh, I've been cosplaying now for at least almost a decade, um, which doesn't feel like that. And I do cosplayers, everything from Marvel to different video games. And uh, I work with organizations such as um, the Avengers Initiative, uh, Sci-Fi Coalition, um, Beyond Fandom, a couple other ones out there. But... Uh, it's been it's been an awesome run, and uh, hope to do some more in the future. Thanks for sharing. And last but not least, Trevor, sir, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Hi, everybody. I'm Trevor. I'm a business development manager by day and Hawkeye by well, almost every other time that I'm not working. <laughs> um, I've been I'm new to cosplay. I've only been doing it for a couple of years. Um, I'm a member of several different groups as well. Um, primarily do Hawkeye. That's what I'm known for. But I do have a lot of other costumes that I'm working on and I do some Star Wars and DC and other stuff as well. So like I said, I'm new to cosplay, but uh, having a great time and definitely enjoying the opportunity to serve the community. Well, thanks for sharing. Uh, Ramon, let me turn back to you for a second. So you kind of indicated that you're a child life specialist working at Miller. Uh, could you share with our audience more or less uh, elaborate more what a child life specialist, what child life is and what is Miller in terms of its care for, for kids? 
Yeah, so our child life program, we have a child life specialist that's in almost every pediatric unit, hospital, from our emergency department to inpatient units to outpatient units. And we basically, in a normal hospital environment, play, develop an appropriate language, we explain why they're here, the way that they're able to understand, help them with medical procedures, um, and a normal and try to normalize it by making the room more comfortable. Another way to do to try to help them comfortable is that we try to host special show events and special show shows for them um, while they're in our hospital. And so we treat not only patient but their entire family. Thank you, uh, Pam. Given your um, involvement in using IT during these challenging times, how has that been key to helping out uh, these patients and families during this time? Yeah, so um, when the pandemic hit, um, there were many restrictions that put into place. Um, one of them was visitor restrictions, meaning that um, patients were only able to see or um, have, have one parents at their bedside. And for also limited on um, the amount of engagement that they, they could have. So this made, made our patients feel lonely and bored for most of the day. And, uh, and uh, we were able to utilize um, Zoom, Zoom and FaceTime a lot um, to help bring back that connection with um, their family and friends and, and um, so our hospital teachers were also using Zoom to um, basically make sure, sure that patients are on, tra on track with their work while they're here at the hospital. And um, with regards to the Millie Show, oh, um, we all added more and more content to provide patients with, with more options on what they could watch on, on the TV. Um, we added movies in the morning and the afternoon. Um, we have aquarium game shows, special musicians, and um, community outreach visitors at Shoes House. Um, our patients really love um, the, the Princess and Spider Man and Star Wars show shows. And just, be, just being able to interact with them, um, asking them questions, or just saying hi, hi to their favorite car characters really um, help brighten bright their day. Well, thank you both for uh, sharing and elaborating. Uh, Alan, as you'd indicated, um, you're a frontline worker helping us all out during these challenging times. Um, how's this been different for you, not only someone who's actively out there, but also you're limited to what you can do. And as someone who has helped out virtually uh, with the pandemic, uh, with virtual service, how's that been an adjustment for you? Uh, it's been a huge adjustment, honestly, because I'm very much uh, like to interact with people face to face. Um, and so obviously at work, this has put a huge uh, impact on um, my own mental health, as, as I'm sure many uh, uh, patients have felt the impact of it. And so uh, not being able to interact with people as much, it, it felt a little social obviously socially distant, um, but in more of a um, kind of friendly type of way. It was hard to show smiles. It was hard to show uh, emotion. So um, it definitely impacted us being able to visit uh, different hospitals, but with the new virtual system like Zoom or any other online meeting, we were able to then get back in touch with our uh, the kids at the hospitals and um, luckily like now I don't have to wear a mask because I'm uh, by myself and I can smile and show you guys you know some positive energy so I think uh, it definitely showed us some new uh, venues on how to reach the kids that normally maybe we couldn't. Thank you very much for sharing that. Alisa, uh, so someone who you indicated you're a teacher and you've done some virtual service uh, with Miller how has it been adjusting to that different dichotomy of having to use technology to reach out to youngsters to teach them, but also what would normally would be an interpersonal thing to, you know, uh, you know, to kind of create this environment for kids in a, in a service condition? Um, it's been a little bittersweet. Um, you know, I teach younger kids and change can be hard when they're used to structure and stability in a regular classroom. And so having to adapt to that was a big challenge, but they're also really great at going with the flow at the same time. So um, they've embraced it in a way that a lot of people haven't been able to. Um, as a teacher, it's been challenging to wrap my brain around how to 
make things more hands-on for kids. Uh, you know, kindergartners love to touch and play and socialize with one another and how to adapt that to a virtual setting has been really challenging. Um, but it's also been really rewarding too um, with virtual visits and being able to connect with kids in a way that we've never been able to do before. Um, I get to see inside their homes. They get to show me their pets. Um, I'm a part of their family because I'm right in their living room or their bedroom or their kitchen um, in ways that we've never had that before. So that's been really interesting and also kind of neat too. Um, and when I do the virtual visits, uh, it's kind of the same thing. As, as much as you love giving hugs and, and really showing your support and connecting with kids, it's also really rewarding that we can be involved in kids who are normally too sick to be out and have that contact. So we still get to connect with them in ways we've never been able to do before. So it's a little bit of, of both, um, a little good and a little bad. Well, thank you. Uh, Trevor, so your daughter and you helped with some uh, virtual greet, uh, greetings. Uh, how did you recruit her? And just as father and, and daughter, how was it kind of um, doing that as a family to hopefully spread a little cheer? Well, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm new to the cosplay world. And uh, I think she would probably tell you if she had the chance that she really got me into cosplay. But uh, that's not really the case. But it's been really nice to be able to do this as a family to, um, to really have, especially through the pandemic, right, to have something to focus on together. Um, it's, it's really rewarding to see her want to, to help, uh, to want to do these things and, and um, you know, at a young age, be excited about giving back to the community and doing the virtual visits and, and doing the charity work that we, we get to do, even though it's socially distanced. Um, so yeah, it's, it's incredibly rewarding to be able to do this with her and, and very um, exciting for me to see my daughter who, you know, to really open up and really want to do these things. It's, it's been very, very rewarding for sure. Well, thank you. Uh, Pam, you had touched upon um, the Millie show and, you know, some of the changes you've made. Um, could you just further elaborate to our audience uh, in person versus uh, virtual, uh, just some of the adjustments you have done to hopefully make it work, but both, both just, you know, as a safety factor, but also um, to make it fun for the kids. Yeah, so I guess to begin with, I wanted to explain what Millie Show is to our audience. Um, so the Millie Show is a, a child-oriented show, and just for our, for our patients, um, we use CCTV or closed caption television to broadcast so daily at 12, 12 30, 30, 30. Um, We film and edit all of, all of our shows here in our studio, studio with a child life specialist, the host, and times they could, could be accompanied by special guests, such as our mascot or um, um, special visitors, such as yourself. So um, the goal of the Millie Shelley Show is to provide distraction as well as entertainment to our patients who are, who are stuck in them all day. And we also pro provide a way for them to interact with the show live by, by calling their hospital cell phones privates. And so back then, then by the pandemic, we um, love, love to host live shows. So just be, be um, right in front of this child life specialist and um, the, the patients will continue to call in and ask questions and, and interact with them, whether they're playing a game or just reading a book and, and asking questions. Um, but because you know the pandemic, people didn't really want to do live shows anymore. So we turned to the pre-recorded shows, which is, which is kind of a little, little bit easier on the child life specialist as they don't have to you know constantly prepare for the show. Like, like oh, well, all these equipment up, I got to make sure that I, I advertise to my patients that I'm having a show today. Today, so I have enough enough callers and is an engage. Um, it was def, definitely way easier on the child life specialist part, and also my part as as you know, you easily run into technical issues when you're hosting a live show. But the pre-recorded ones were a brief, just um, pull up pull video and hit play, and um, kids really seem to like like it. Um, you get more and more variety. Um, whether it be any, anything you can find on a YouTube, YouTube video or it's just, just something that will come up generic, generically, um, the patients to like, I guess both, but, but more, uh, make sure that, you know, the, the patient always given, given something to call in about because we could just play a show and they, 
you're just watching, but the, the best part of the Millie show though, is them calling in and um, just, just interacting with us and making, you know, making it a fun experience. Well, thank you for elaborating for us. Uh, Ramona, could you uh, share with our audience, um, for those who want to prepare, for, vo for volunteers who want to help out, um, what do they need to do to kind of be prepared for that in terms of logistics, but also hopefully when such in-person activities can take place, what do people need to be, be prepared for? Yes, so volunteers are, are able to come back into our hospital um, for um, they, are, they will need, will need to be seen um, um, background training through our hospital and our department. Um, also, so for vaccinations, we do require in the past for our volunteers to have their TV and their flu vaccine. Um, and then I'm going to predict that in the future we will require, require COVID vaccine as well. well um, something that will also, also be new for volunteers that, that they've had to experience in the past is that we, we will work for masking in our, in our hospital, um, even with the COVID, COVID vaccine, because all of our, all of our ladies um, require the mask when interacting with our pediatric patients. And so it's, it's going to be a very new adjustment when we do have to, uh, when we um, are allowed to have volunteers. But um, I think I think with our precautions that we're, that we're taking, the steps that we're working in, um, will definitely benefit our patients. Well, thank you. So I've been very been lucky myself to have done some in-person visits with uh, my fellow brethren, brothers and sisters in the Five Overse Legion, along with my fellow members in the Avengers Initiative. Could you share with our audience what um, Super Sibling Day is for you folks? Yes. So um, in our hospital, our um, pediatric tradition, our hospital allies, um, a lot of the times the family is able to go up and the siblings are able to go up into the hospital room due to capacity of the, of the room, the illness, illness of the parents, et cetera, et cetera, or um, the parents don't want their uh, siblings to see, to see their patient like that. And so we, ho we host this special event just, just as siblings because they are little superheroes going through this, this with entire family. And in 2019, in honor of Sibling Day, uh, we hosted a special event for them um, called Super Siblings, where when they come into the, the hospital, you go into the, to the event, and they, they, there were many different act activities for them to do. We also had a hospital theme activity for, for them to do. But the, the highlight of the event was that our, that our superheroes were there just, just to see them. And the superheroes loved, loved to engage with the siblings. It really made them feel so special uh, during these, this event. And we really emphasize that we are the entire fam family. While well, all the patients here and are so real special, um, they also created artwork that that they were able to send up to the to the pit room, and so hope, hope we weren't been able to to host this event since 2019, but hopefully in the future we can host something similar to this again. Well, thank you. And to turn back to our um, cosplay volunteers, Alan, I'd like to turn back to you. So, you and I had done a. Um, pediatric service event where you were luckily able to bring one of your kids with you. Um, as someone who serves other people as a frontline worker, but also your kid gets a chance to see you serve in your outfit, uh, what are some of the lessons they hopefully pick up by seeing you in action, both either in your hobby or working on the front line? Well, I think I wanted them to pick up, uh, kind of like you just said, it, it, it is, this is my hobby and this is what I enjoy. Um, and even though it's an, an enjoyment for me, it can be enjoyment for others. And, uh, hopefully I want to teach them to be able to give back through whatever means they feel is, uh, good for them, whatever their hobbies might be, or, uh, interests might be, because although, again, this is where it makes me happy. I find that, uh, in learning the cosplay community, uh, you can usually, uh, help others, Spread some positivity as well. So, not only in, in my day to day stuff do I hope my kids see that hard work and um, pushing yourself to do what's best uh, is a good attribute to have, but I also hope that my kids see that uh, help serving others and, and being there for others is just as important as taking care of yourself. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, Trevor, back to you, sir. Um... So I believe, I think your wife is looking to hopefully join us as well. And um, so just for your family in general, 
aside from just the fun part of dressing up, uh, what is their interest and in, beyond what you've seen virtually, what we have been able to do to adjust during these challenging times when hopefully it looks like as things are opening up, uh, what do you hope to do as a family, particularly in a service capacity? Well, we've been very fortunate, um, even through the last half of 2020, to participate in a n- number of charity events, uh, a lot of drive through events, uh, toy drives, uh, food drives, diaper drives, all kinds of things through, uh, through another organization. So we've, we've the three of us, um, my wife and my daughter and I have been doing a lot of that already. Um, and so uh, it, it's been it's been fantastic. I mean, uh, there for a while, I think we had something going on almost every weekend. Um, so I, I'm super excited, though, to get um, make it more personal. Right. I mean, we're wearing masks. We're waving at people in cars. Um, you know, it's not nearly as as uh, engaging as getting to actually talk to people, take pictures with them, talk to them, get to know them a little bit and share that that um, that inner positive energy with them um, in a much closer way. Right. So uh, we're super excited as things start to come back to some sense of normalcy to to be able to do the events, the in-person events, do the hospital visits and those things. So um, it's, it's definitely been incredibly rewarding to do this as a family. And not only is it a fun hobby, but the fact that we can do something to give back to the community. Thank you. Alisa, uh, um, you had shared me with me a very uh, moving tale about cosplay and, and your son, um, how that had moved him. Would you mind sharing with the audience you know, how, how the co- how the hobby has been, I think, a blessing to you, but it sounds like hopefully your family as well. Yeah, um, it's been great. When my uh, son was about five and in kindergarten, he had dressed up um, for the school uh, costume party and um, he was as a big pumpkin. And the kids in the class got very excited about it, ran up to him. It was one of those big inflatable costumes. And started pounding all over that. Well, my son is on the autism spectrum. He um, has a lot of anxiety issues and things like that. And that completely ruined him. Um, He was terrified to wear costumes and had a lot of uh, problems with him. We couldn't get him to put anything on for Halloween that night um, because of it. Um, And so it was really wonderful, I think, honestly, for me to be able to put on a costume and I took him with me to our first small convention and he was um, really worried and concerned and full of anxiety about me wearing a costume. He kept saying, mom, what if people laugh at you? Mom, what if people look at you? Mom, what if what if people make fun of your costume? And um, it, it was really great that I could take that time to use that as a lesson for him that I am happy with who I am. I feel good in this costume and it's okay if other people don't like it, this is what I like to do. And then when, you know, be comfortable with who you are and let that shine. Uh, When we went to the con, it was really rewarding for him to see the joy that my costume brought other people. And yeah, it did get attention, but it got a lot of positive attention. And I think that was a really valuable lesson for him to see, like, I'm not afraid of what other people are going to say about me because it makes me feel good inside. And that's really what matters. I'm really happy that I've been able to model that for him. And he's been around a lot of other people to see that at our charity charity events, too, and how we can bring joy to other people as long as we have joy in our own hearts, you know? Thank you very much. Well, I'd like to go ahead and round out this discussion uh, with closing statements from our panelists. Let me go ahead and begin with our uh, Miller folks first. Um, Ramona and Pam, uh, let me give you a chance to both each give any closing comments you'd like to give to our audience. So I just wanted to give a big shout out to all the cosplayers that have visited us during our Millie shows. Um, Like I mentioned earlier, we really appreciate you guys um, taking time out of your busy days um, to just um, help Brian and I out our Penn days and, and whether it's just watching um, pre-recorded shows that you guys have on YouTube or, or um, just watch watching um, our actual live shows with you guys and letting them ask you guys <laughs> random questions. I mean, really, um, um, something to look forward, forward to every day and definitely something to look back, back at and say, oh, well, I got, got to Disney Princess or... The Avengers, the Star Wars characters. Um, so thank you so much for that. 
Um, I would just like to say thank you, thank you so much for this continued collaboration and from visiting the hospital in the, in the past, visit, visiting virtually now. Um, I will have to say that before, um, not all of our patients were able to see our special visitors. And now that we can do it virtually, all patients, even if they're in isolation, and they aren't able to come, to come out of their rooms. All over 250 patients see our live shows the day. And so but thank you for this continued collaboration as it truly, truly brightens patients' days. And we are so, we are so honored to have this as a part of our part of our services. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lisa. Um, you're going to have to remind me. What you're oh, my apologies. Oh, I'm just giving you a chance for all you panelists to give any closing comments you'd like about uh, pediatric service, the hobby, or just reflections on what you're looking forward to now that things are hopefully opened up. I'm very, very much looking forward to hugs. Um, I've missed that the most. So um, the ability to be able to do that with little ones is, is really important. Um, and I did want to say uh, I have personally been touched by experiences like this. My brother growing up was very, very sick and in the hospital until he was five. Um, as the oldest of four children, um, all three of my brothers had different disabilities and we spent a lot of time in children's hospitals. Um, what they would have done to be able to meet a superhero then would have been amazing. Um, so the fact that you guys are able to do that now is really touching to me in a personal way. And I wanna say thank you for giving us all the opportunity to make everybody's day just a little bit brighter. It's huge, so. Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, Trevor. I, you know, I just have to say that, um, again, I keep saying this, but being new to cosplay and not even doing this for two years, when I found out that there were opportunities to, to do the charity work, to do the visits, to do the, you know, everything that I've been able to do over the course of a period of time, I, I said that I'm hooked. Like that hooked me more than getting into a costume and going to a convention, which, you know, it's been a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. And the, the photo shoots, all the things that we get to do, but being able to take something that I love so much and then give it back to the community and, and see the, the looks on people's faces and the smiles that you can bring. And that, you know, it's, it's just so rewarding. And I'm so grateful that I found it. I'm so grateful that I get to be part of it. And I thank you all for letting me be part of the community. Well, thank you very much for sharing. And last but not least, Alan, we'll close with you, sir. Not a problem. Uh, so I just wanted to say to all my cosplay community out there and uh, all the different organizations I work with, thank you very much. Uh, being able to be a part of this stuff has uh, not only, uh, I think, helped me as a person, um, just overall just positivity but it also uh helps with my i suffer from depression so um it's a it's a win-win on that front and uh i just anybody that's interested in coming into this world by all means um come on there's tons of events there's tons of families and kids and everybody else that that need uh that support so to uh, Millie and every other uh, place that we've worked with. Uh, we're here for you. We'll always be there. And um, it's just been a great experience. And I hope uh, we paved the way for future events and other cosplayers as uh, time goes on. Well, thank you much for sharing. And on that note, I just want to thank our representatives from uh, Miller Child Life for definitely uh, sharing their experiences and their expert and their experiences with us. I'd like to thank um, these Avengers Initiative volunteers for not only taking some time out to only share their involvement with this effort, but also for their time and service uh, for these act activities, both in person and just taking time out of their day to do virtual service. Uh, we as a group look forward to hopefully when the time is right to be of service to anyone who can use our assistance. And that being said, we look forward to a time which we can all meet safely uh, for Comic-Con International shows. Uh, please take care, and we'll hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care and bye.